Representative Freiburg, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. So you're on five committees or subcommittees here at the House. Is that a challenge to juggle that much work and information? It's, it's a fair amount when I saw my committee, you know, you try to pick your preferences expecting you won't get all of them so I did that and to my surprise I ended up on five so I've been I've been able to manage it I mean the, the two ones that really meet a lot are government operations and health policy so uh, the other ones are you know once a week or so or at ad hoc so it's more it's it's manageable but I mean it's it's good it gets you an opportunity to be involved in lots of different issues so I have no complaints about it and you represent parts of Golden Valley Crystal Robbinsdale and New Hope. Mm -hmm. Heading into the 2018 session, what issues are important to the constituents of your district? Well, sure. I mean, you know, we're like a lot of suburban communities. I mean, education is always an important issue. I have children in the public schools in my area, so um, it's certainly an important issue to me and making sure our schools have the resources they need. Um, transportation is always an important issue. I think in our area, a lot of people commute um, when they work, as I do um, when I come here. Um, you know, just more locally specific, the city of New Hope has a bonding request for a 50 meter swimming pool um, that, that they're seeking this year. So hopeful that uh, Representative Carlson, Senator Rest, and I can deliver on that. And so, so we'll see. So your occupation is a public health attorney. Mm -hmm. How does that kind of influence your position here as a, a member of the House? Sure. It's, well, I'd say it's been very helpful. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, attorneys get kind of a bad rap at times, but, you know, I think being familiar with, um, with the law, with how laws are passed, how to read statutes very closely, um, you know, how to make them stronger if there's a problem with the way they're worded has been extremely helpful. And, um, you know, I'm on the health policy committee. So, um, when I work in my other job, it's it's kind of a niche area of law. I work mostly on tobacco control, so um, trying to get people to stop smoking essentially is the end goal of what we're working for, um, or using tobacco generally. Um, so, but you know that kind of carries over into other public health areas. I've worked on a bill related to immunization, a kind of pro-vaccine bills you know, for the last four or five years. Um, so, um, just kind of having the you know knowing knowing what policies are grounded in science, I think, and um, have the best potential to improve public health um, has been kind of a very helpful background to have. And I wanted to ask you about the uh, vaccination. Actually, in 2017 session, um, you proposed legislation that would require parents to review with a physician the potential risk of not vaccinating their child. Mm -hmm. Why is it an important issue? Well, I'm a parent. I have two young kids. I've actually uh, carried this bill um, going back a few years here, and I just remember the first time I brought um, my that, my daughter uh, to the daycare that she went to. She's in she's in the school. She's in second grade now, uh, so that was a little while ago. And just being asked about her vaccination status, I'm like, well, of course I vaccinate. Doesn't everybody do that? Actually, no. Um, so that was somewhat concerning to me, um, you know. And it's just it's just gotten more important i think over you know i think more more and more people i think most people support vaccinations um, but it's been kind of a soft support so i think some of the recent news stories the the measles outbreak here in minnesota you know a year or two ago in disneyland um, has generated a lot of attention over this issue and i'm hopeful that uh, i'll finally be able to get the bill heard in committee this year i asked the chair about it um, last year during the measles outbreak and he said he was willing to look more favorably on, on doing so. And you have a strong social media presence, actually. Um, how has this helped you connect with people as a lawmaker? Um, it's, I think it's very helpful. Uh, you, know, it's, um, you, know, you don't want to spend too much time on it. I, I certainly do interact with constituents on there. I'd say on the whole, it's, it's more useful in um, being effective when you are here in St. Paul. I mean, a lot of, I think the sense I have is that Minnesota has Kind of the one of the more active political Twitter uh, groups of people than most states, um, so you know there's a lot of people I can follow just so I know what's going on in other committees I don't serve on or in other legislative districts. Um, it's been useful. I think it's made me a, a, a. I mean, people sometimes step in it on Twitter, but I think it does on the whole the good outweighs the bad, um, and you do have an opportunity to learn a lot of w about what's going on, especially around here at the state capitol. 
in one of our most viewed clips, our video clips uh, on the House Information YouTube page, is Representative Flanagan and yourself performing Prince's Purple Rain uh, sh shortly after he passed away. I never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant to cause you any pain. See you laughing. I only wanted to see you laughing in the purple rain. What's the backstory on how that kind of uh, came about? Uh, well, I found, you know, I think it was a Thursday when we found out just, you know, Prince tragically sure. passed away. And um, already by Friday, I think there was talk about some sort of resolution on the House floor, honoring Prince. Um, you know, certainly we've done that before, but I sort of felt like um, Prince is so important to Minnesota um, and, you know, stayed in the state. You know, he's just kind of an institution here. I felt like we needed to do something more. Um, so, I mean, I've played the piano since I was in second grade or something, and um, I had seen Representative Flanagan um, performed the national anthem before the Vikings Packers game one year so I knew she I knew she could sing really well and if there was anybody who could pull off a Prince song it would be her and I knew she was also a huge fan of Prince as well so I texted her that Friday um, and I said uh, this is either the greatest idea I've ever had or the worst idea I've ever had and I don't think it's anything in between but what would you think if we performed Purple Rain on the house floor? And she said she was intrigued, so and so I pursued it with the speaker, and I was able to get permission to do it essentially, and and we did it, and I think it was pretty well received. Um, you know, I, I just sort of felt like you know this, your standard resolution, politicians reading speeches, um, just didn't seem sufficient to me somehow to honor the memory of somebody like Prince, who is so important to our state. Rain. Honey, I know, I know, I know, times are changing. 